Hi everyone, it's Leah and Matt at Flytrap Store and today is what we call tissue culture time. Tissue culture time! <laughs> Matt's wearing a mask because um, he doesn't want any of his droplets to go into the flow hood here, which is what's behind him. Um, and he's going to talk you through some of his procedures today. Yeah, so typically I don't wear a mask. I'm trying to talk loud so you guys can hear me between the, the sound of the laminar flow hood that's on behind me. And the mask, I fear it might not come out too well in this video, so I'm trying to talk loudly. And for that reason, I'm wearing a mask so that my my spray doesn't get into the flow hood that's all sterile here. So everything behind me has been sterilized. And um, I guess I'll just walk you through what's in here right now. So on the far right side here is my um, back incinerator. I just got a new one. Um, unfortunately, the one I had for 10 years that I got pretty cheaply quit working right as COVID hit. And so everything that was related to sterilizing stuff was super expensive, but I had to replace it because I have to use it for tissue culture work. There are other options, but this is my preferred one. So anyway, that's my new uh, back to incinerator for, these are my forceps and my little utensil rack um, to hold the gear that I use. So when you do tissue culture, you can't touch the plant with your hands because it's almost impossible to get your hands sterile. A lot of people wear gloves, but that's still, you should not touch, you can't sterilize your gloves after every time you touch something. So the forceps, I sterilize them with the back incinerator to keep them clean between uh, cultures. Uh, so everything I touch, typically, if I think there's a chance I contaminated it, I'll run it, I'll run the forceps through the back incinerator. Um, so this is a jar of sterile water. That's what all these mason jars over here are, is uh, sterile water. Um, these are cultures, and I just use food coloring to signify the different types of media that are in them. So this yellow one here is uh, what I'm gonna use to initialize some Saracenia later. Um, the black is uh, what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna replate the cephalotis culture um, onto those, the black ones. And then behind it, there's a pink one, and that's for the Heliamphora I'll do later today too. So, um, anyway, this is a culture of Cephalotus. It appears to be sterile, and so I keep it in the flow hood as I take it out of the bag and unwrap the seal on it. And what I'm going to do is just basically divide these clumps of tissue up and put them on this. The media looks identical, but this one actually has some, some different chemicals in it, different growth regulators and stuff that uh, I've actually never used before. So I'm hoping to get these cephalotis a little larger coming out of tissue culture because they tend to stay very small in tissue culture. And this is something that I've contacted a bunch of people who have tissue cultured cephalotis and they say it's a, it's a really big challenge to get these things to be any significant size coming out of tissue culture. So I'm hoping with this new media formulation I can get them a little bit bigger. So. All right, I'll start the replate here, and uh, I don't know that I need to talk you through it. Basically, all I'm gonna do is pull out pieces of tissue, rinse off the media that sticks to them in the sterile water, and then shove them down in the new flask. And it'll probably take me two or three flasks when I start separating all the little little plants in here. So um, I guess I can just do one flask, and if we can cut it there, or maybe we'll, we'll keep going if Leah thinks it's super interesting. So. It's always super interesting. Always super interesting. <laughs> the mad scientist of fly traps and carnivorous plants. Okay, I'm coming over to your side here. This side? Oh. So that we can get the microphone. Well, I'm right handed, so this is going to be you okay. probably know you're better off going to my right side. but For the microphone, though, it's on this side. This culture grew fairly well. As you can see, there's lots of little clumps of cephalotis in here. And uh, I'm just gonna try to get them all out and on the plate. 
and then clean them up a little bit and start putting them in the fresh media. You can see some of the the bottoms of these plants are got a little little dead stuff on them, which is not a big deal. I'll try to get some of it or most of it off, but I won't spend a whole lot of time doing that. If I keep up with the replating, they typically don't get much dead stuff on them, and it's super easy to just pull them out of the old culture and plug them into the new one. But if I get behind, which does happen, uh, you end up with a lot of tissue that's dead, and then you got to spend a lot of time cleaning between replates, which I'm going to try to avoid this year because last year I had I got pretty far behind in the winter, and I didn't end up spend a lot more time out here cleaning cultures um, than I wanted to. So. And then those cultures, they don't do as well when you pot them out, right? Yeah, typically you want to, there's a time cycle for every different type of plant and you want to keep on that time cycle, both on replates and for potting out so that you get the best survival rate. Cephalotis salad. That's kind of what it looks like. Never tasted them, but I don't think they'd be very good. No. That should be a felony. You could use them like sprouts on a salad or something. No. <laughs> They're sacred. Okay, that's good enough. Yeah? So I got most of the stuff out of there. You can see there's a couple tiny little pictures and stuff, but yeah. the clumps are gone. So. Yeah. All right. Now what? So this is the new culture that I'm going to put some of this tissue on. And I'll just do one culture. I think it's probably going to take me two or three of these jars to get all that stuff back in there. So yeah, that's a lot. I'm tapping out all the water from the sides of this culture, trying to get it down to the bottom, and I'll pour it out. You don't want a bunch of water. The condensation happens is the, the uh, cultures cool after I sterilize them in the autoclave or the pressure cooker. So you get a lot of condensation. I try to get that moisture out. And um, so here we go with cleaning. Just trying to pull off some dead stuff here and separate these a little bit. Why can't you use your hands? Is it because no matter how much you wash them, they'll always have something on them? Or? That's right. You know, your hands, your skin is not uniform like these stainless steel forceps are. So your, your skin will shed off. And I think most people are aware that your skin and all over your body, there are bacteria that are healthy for humans, even though people think that bacteria is a bad thing. In a lot of cases, it's actually beneficial. So anyway, in a culture, if you get bacteria into the culture, it'll contaminate the culture and then it can outgrow the plant and just take it over. So you want to keep the culture clean, so you don't want to introduce any kind of molds, bacteria, any kind of disease to the culture. or un Basically all you want in the culture are the plants. That's the goal. And there are some biocides you can use, so stuff that'll kill, kill most bacteria and molds. Uh, and I do have a biocide in there called PPM. Uh, it's just an insurance policy for me because I'm pretty sure this culture doesn't have any contamination at all. But it's nice to know that if something were to sneak in there, it wouldn't crash the culture very quickly. If I could get to it when I noticed it, I could replate them and save most of them, especially if I do another sterilization or something. Um, so anyway, as you can see, this is much harder than working with your hands it's quite tedious well you're making it look easy but i have tried it and trust me it is a learned skill for sure it's it is a i mean this is not easy <laughs> no nope. it's but you're making it look easy but it's really not it's time consuming and tedious but yeah. um necessary for quick propagation of most carnivorous plants so. we're coming up on 10 minutes here okay well, we might have to do a separate second video. We can restart here, but let me try to start putting these in. Okay. There are the time, how much time are we at? 20 seconds. Okay. So basically, now that they're ready to go, I'll just set the lid up here, all that stuff up there sterile, and I just start shoving them down in there. You're not shoving. 
Yeah. Pushing them down into the media. Well, it's gentle pushing. Gentle pushing. That's correct. Okay, that's it. Yeah, I'll finish up at this culture. Continuing with the replating here. Yeah, sorry about that. So, basically what I'll do is I'll just go through and pick up all these that I've cleaned most of the dead stuff off of and shove them down in here until it's mostly full. <clears throat> they have a little room to grow. They're not too cramped in together, but it's not a mostly empty culture either. So, and when you're doing this tissue culture, you always want to work, since the air blows from the back, that's a HEPA filter behind there, it filters out all the particulates. And as it's blowing, clean air towards me, you want to keep everything that might be contaminated, so my hands and um, arms and stuff, I try to keep them as far close to me as I can and away from the back of the flow hood. And everything that you know has been sterilized, you keep it in the back of the flow hood to avoid contamination of it. So, anyway. Which is actually harder than you think. You have to keep that in mind. Again, I tried this. <laughs> I did not do well. We have struggled a little bit with it. A little Rooney. <laughs> All right. Well, that's probably good enough for the first culture. So, so I'll probably end up putting this one culture into three jars. And you can see that gives them a little bit of room to grow. And uh, let's hope this new media makes them grow a little bit bigger. Okay. Let's Thank you, up. my... Mad carnivorous scientist, Matt. And then here I just have some. Um, oh, we're gonna seal it. Yeah, it's just um, what do you call it? Saran wrap, basically. Yeah. Uh, that I cut in about a two-inch segment here, and I just run it around the lid. Gives it an extra little bit of protection because these these lids don't seal airtight, and you don't want them to. You want some air exchange. This will limit some of the air exchange, but it also helps prevent contamination and I found that the plants actually grow just fine with that uh, with that seal so um, and then I usually do bag them as well so I've got all my supplies around me obviously as you can see we're pretty tight on space here but <laughs> we make it work and so I think we have fishing step, gear to I'll the just, left <laughs> actually I, I uh, label it cephalotus and I put the date on it and I think today is the 16th mm -hmm. And then that's it. And then these guys will Bang grow, em. grow out, and then I'll either replay them again, or they'll go into soil next time. Probably some of each. I try to keep enough cultures going that I can keep them rolling out, but also, uh, you know, keep them in tissue culture so I can make more if I need to. Yep. And then when I pot them out, uh, we pot in the premium New Zealand long fiber moss, which supposedly has uh, antibacterial properties, right? That's correct. Yeah. So that helps even more. All right, okay. so that's a little bit of what I do every day. Hours and hours of this kind of stuff during the winter. Get ready for the plant, all the plant demand in the spring and summer next year. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening, Flytrap and Carnivorous Acolytes. Bye for now. Bye.